Hello and welcome guys. No, don't worry, this is not the brake replacement video again. In this one I am going to change the front wheel bearing on a Volvo S60 2014 P3 platform. So let's jump straight into it. Jack up and secure the car as usual. Remove the wheel and the brake assembly. If you wonder how to do it, you can check it out in my other video by clicking to the top right corner. So once the brakes are off, remove the wheel hub bolt. You could have done it while the car was on the ground by removing the wheel center cap and undoing the bolt that way. Or you can do it just as I did. Leave the car in the first gear if it's a front wheel drive car and undo the bolt. You will need a 13mm hex socket and the ratchet wrench. Of course you can use an impact as well, either air or battery impact as I did. If it isn't a front wheel drive car, just stick to the first method. Next step is to remove the track rod end ball joint, also called tie rod end ball joint as well. In order to do that, spray some penetration fluid like WD-40 to the frets and let it sit for a while. Again, you can use a couple different methods here. I prefer the impact wrench again, but it should just work with a regular wrench, however, you may want to put a 6mm allen bit into the threads to hold against the wrench. By the way, you will need a 21mm hex socket or a same sized spanner. Now let's remove the ball joint itself from the knuckle. As you may think, I've got a few different techniques for that one as well. You can use a ball joint separator, either a scissor type or a fork type, or grab a hammer and hit it a couple times in the knuckle air to break free the taper. But be careful, try not to damage anything. And lastly, the way I did. Put back the nut to the threads to prevent them from damage and then place a socket over the nut to prevent that one as well. Then give it a few good whacks with a hammer and it's done. Next one is the lower control arm ball joint. Again, spray some penetration fluid onto the frets and wait a little bit. Now if you are lucky, as I was, you will be able to remove the nut with a spanner only. It is a 21mm hex again. But what if you are not? Then grab a 6mm allen bit, put it into the thread of the ball joint stud. However, you may not be able to fit it in, because the drive shaft joint is in the way. So then you screw back the old hub bolt. Place a socket over it if you want to reuse it, which you shouldn't want to because it's an aluminium bolt and it's probably stretched already. Anyways, give a couple wax onto the socket to break loose the drive shaft from the hub. Now you can push on the drive shaft a bit and hopefully you can fit the allen bit. From here it is the same story. Hold against the 21mm spanner with the allen bit by placing a 3 8 or 10mm spanner on it and undo the nut. Once we have the nut off, let's remove the ball joint from the knuckle. Again, the methods apply as before were mentioned with the track rod and ball joint. Now I will be using a scissor type ball joint separator to get it loose. You may want to put back the nut to have a bigger surface to grip on. So place the ball joint separator on the ball joint. By the way, you will need one with a 21mm jaw opening for this particular ball joint. Once it's in place, start wrenching on the board. But before doing anything, remove the track rod and ball joint from its place to be able to turn the knuckle. You will hear a popping noise and then you will know it is free. For some reason, in my case, it was already loose, I just didn't notice it. Lucky me again. Here comes the tricky part. You have to separate the ball joint from the knuckle and at the same time remove the drive shaft from the wheel hub. My tip is to push down the control arm using the C-clamp and the jack handle. So you want to pick a C-clamp that has a big belly if that makes sense. I mean you will be able to put a jack handle in it once it's on the control arm. So place it over the control arm and put the jack handle inside just as you've seen in the video. Now you can press down on it, but I can't stress it enough to be careful, you don't want it to end in your face. Again, a two-post lift would be a huge advantage. So push down on it and at the same time try to pull the knuckle towards yourself and remove the dry shaft from it. Once it's done, relax a bit, because the exhausting part of it is just coming. 
We have finally arrived to the main point of the job, which is to remove the wheel bearing. As you may have already noticed, I like to give you options, so here they are. First one is to use the tool designed to remove the wheel bearing itself. It isn't just a typical wheel bearing, but a Gen 2 wheel bearing. The specialty of it is that the bearing and the hub come together, ergo can't be separated. Or to correct myself, it shouldn't be. So in this tool case, there is everything we need for the replacement, to which I will come back later to explain what is what. Another option is to buy some volt extenders from your local hardware store, I recommend at least two, and place them between the knuckle and the back of the wheel hub. Once they are in the place, start tightening them and they should separate the hub from the knuckle. However, I don't really recommend this method because it may work or may not, but definitely it is the cheapest way to do it. I didn't choose this method because first of all, I don't really have enough knuckle surface where I can place the bolt extenders nor they are quite flat. The last method I would consider is to remove the whole knuckle and place it on the press and press out the bearing. That should work but it takes more time and the press obviously. I couldn't think of any other ways to do it, but if you know any, I highly encourage you to share them in the comments section. It would be much appreciated. So let's assemble the tool. By the way, I have the one for the 82mm bearing, which is in some of the Mazdas, Fords and Volvos to mention a couple. There are also a different sizes. I believe the WAG group uses this kind of bearing the most, but I may be wrong on that one. So back to the assembling. Take the two halves which have the bigger bore that goes over the bearing. Put them together with two bolts, you will need a 6mm allen bit to tighten them. Now grab the spindle, spray or use some lubricant on it. I used WD-40 again. Firstly, place a thrust ball bearing on it then the metal plate and the big circular plate with holes in it. Into the four holes, put the four pins and put it through the wheel bearing. Now from the other end you will need the smaller goldish colored plate which fits through the wheel hub hole and finally the long nut. If you are concerned about the ABS sensor, also called wheel speed sensor, that it will be damaged, then you can remove it, however you don't have to be it won't be touched during the removal. So let's remove that bad boy. Place a 30mm spanner on the end of the tool and let it touch the knuckle. That way it can be a one person job. Anyways, I doubt that it would be a piece of cake holding against it. Now start ratcheting the front end. For that you will need a 22mm hex socket. I recommend using some extension such a jack handle or a very long breaker bar. After you heard a popping noise it should be easier to wretch it. It takes a decent time to remove it so please be easy on yourself. Once you are done clean the wheel hub hole with a wire brush but be mindful of the ABS sensor if you haven't removed it. In my case it wasn't that bad so I didn't need so much of an effort. Lucky me again. At this point, the half of the job is already behind our back. So let's put the fresh and new bearing back where it belongs. In order to do that, we will need the plates with a smaller bore from the tool case. You may be thinking why I'm not giving you another options here. So here is why. For the reason that the bearing is together with the hub, it wouldn't be a good idea to push on the hub surface because it could damage the ball bearing part. From my understanding, if you would be pushing on the hub surface, it would move the inner race of the bearing a little bit out of its position, because the whole bearing assembly makes contact between the outer race of the bearing and the wheel hub hole if it makes any sense. So that's why you can't use a regular bearing slash bushing removal tool or a press here, unless you have the correct adapter plate to push on. However, if you know about any other methods, Feel free to share them in the comments section. Well, now back to assembling the tool. It is 90% the same as for the removal. Unfortunately, you can't use the thrust bearing here because the spindle is not long enough, but anyways, it goes back easier than it comes out. So place the large circular plate over the spindle, put the four pins in it, but use the larger goldish colored plate on the end of the spindle instead of the small one 
and finally the nut. Before you start tightening the things down, make sure you align the bearing perfectly straight and level into its position or slightly tilt it upwards because when you will be ratcheting and applying force on it, it will come out of the alignment towards the bottom end of the bearing if it makes any sense. Don't worry if you have to try it a couple times. Practice makes the master. So once the bearing is aligned, start ratcheting on the front end of the tool. Again, it will take a good effort and time to get it in the place. You can tighten it all the way to the end, because it shouldn't go further than its place. Well, so we are done with replacing the wheel bearing, now we just need to put everything back together. The only difference is that I used a different method pushing down the lower control arm in order to fit the lower control arm ball joint to its position. So I grabbed the jack handle and placed it vertically on the lower control arm and pushed down on it whilst pushing on the knuckle at the same time to get it back to its position where the ball joint just slides into it. Useful tip is to put back the dry shaft into its place prior putting together the lower control arm ball joint and the wheel knuckle. I still used the old bolt for it. Once they are done, you can put the truck rod and ball joint to its place and start tighten the things down. But before you rush yourself into it, I recommend you to re-thread the both ball joint nuts just to make your lives easier. Stop it, stop it. Thank me later. By the way, the lower control arm ball joint nut is M14 by 1.5 size and the track rod and ball joint nut is M14 by 2 size. Make sure you don't mix them up. If they are retreaded, they should go on the ball joint stud with ease, what means you shouldn't need a 6mm allen bit and the spanner to hold against it. After you are finished with them, you can torque down the wheel hub ball. Have it torqued down to 35 newton meters and another 90 degrees. Well, now you just need to reassemble the brakes. I trust you that you can do it on your own as well. However, if you are struggling with it, click to the right corner of the screen for some advice. Now a little time for feedback. Please guys let me know in the comments section if this was an in-depth detailed video to tackle this job on your own or was it too much or still need more information on the process. Your comments would be much appreciated. Finally, thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.